Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Football Manager 2016. And here we are in once more the Champions League. It is going to be another second leg here. And um, well, I know we're talking about, and we're glossing over the league a little bit, but that's because, quite frankly, um, it's been a bit of a non event this year. Um, we haven't really played all that well, and we're absolutely smashing it. You know, if you look at the table here, I didn't even talk about it in the last video, and that's because, well, we're 12 points clear of Juventus with five games to go. And um, I think if we win, and Juventus and Atalanta they lose, obviously Juventus have slowly uh, cl uh, climbed the table here. If we look, um, in fact, let's go this way, it's a bit easier. Uh, if you go to past positions here, as you can see, since game week six, we uh, got top and have never left. Juventus, meanwhile, have only just, with the exception of match, uh, match week 14, have been set in second. You know, they've really struggled for the most part. I mean, they've been down in fourth, you know, getting up there in third, dropped down to fifth at one point and have come back up since. Um, so really, there's been no major challenge. Juventus haven't pushed us. Atalanta haven't. Udinese. Inter have been wallowing down in the middle of the table. I don't know what's happened there. And it's all a bit all over the place, really. Um, so... That's why I've not talked about it. As you can see, we've only—I mean, I know we've only lost four times, but there's five draws, um, and we've, I mean, we've scored 53 goals. We've conceded 19. That's one more than Udinese, but obviously we've scored eight more than them, so that's why you know, it's such a big gulf. But I will show you now, um, since we last spoke, how we've got on. So since the one-nil defeat, or advancement <laughs> against Zenit. Uh, we've played uh, just a few games here. We had a nil-nil against Roma, and unfortunately, the only major talking point out of this is quite a big one, though. Gianluigi Donnarumma uh, got injured, and he was injured, in fact, for six weeks. He's thankfully now down to two, but what that has resulted... Now, I um, sold Diego Lopez. Or in fact, sorry, he retired. I beg your pardon. He retired last year. Um... And he was gone. Um, Abiati, I think, when when years ago, he's no, he's not in the game anymore. So I've had no choice but to use my my backup here, saying air quotes, um, Alain Endazomo. I think as I say, uh, he's regen as can, as you can see, and he's not great. Potential is two stars with one black star. Um, he's got really good bravery. He's got decent strength and jump and reach. Reflexes are decent. But he clearly is not the finished article, and I'm not sure whether he'll make it at this level. But he's good at shot stopping. He reminds me a bit of Mignolet. <laughs> Very good at shot stopping. Fairly balanced guy. Is he really the level that Liverpool need, or in this case Milan needs? No, probably not. But he's the only thing. He's the only thing I've got. He's the only keeper I have. I've got a 16-year-old in the reserves. I couldn't get anyone on loan for some reason. I, I tried to loan a, a player from, I think um, I think it was like Palmer or somewhere, and it said AC Milan cannot loan players during the, um, the regular season or something like that, you know, outside the transfer window, which I thought was a bit weird. So, yeah, but there's no such thing as an emergency loan, apparently, on Football Manager to tell, uh, touch. So that's good. But it didn't stop us winning the Milan derby. Uh, they took the lead through Barber. And then Baca and Davide Calabria, who, again, over the last few weeks, has just been unbelievable. Uh, hey, look, a set piece. How many goals have we conceded from that now? I'd say a good, at least half of our goals have come from that. Um, and we nearly can see here, but good uh, interception by Mori. We've had a lot of these lately, a lot of good breakaways. Here's Carlos Baca. Just when we needed him to have that great bit of composure, just a little bit of quality, he delivers it and he got it in droves. Uh, really nice finish there. Under quite a lot of pressure in fairness to him, I know he had a lot of space there, but the defenders were closing on him, it was a tight angle, the goalkeeper was in a good position, but he still finished it off. And there's Calabria, 12 minutes into the second half, popping up, I thought he was going to be offside when that went in, uh, but a lovely pass from Pastore, and Calabria, absolutely wonderful. Really is one of the best players in the team right now. And then we smashed Torino 2-0. They were just hopeless. They gave nothing to us here. Um, a little bit... For, to call this a Padellion goal, I'm not so sure. As you'll see in a moment. And then Menez, 88th minute. Uh, that Menez goal was a rarity because I'll, I'll tell you why. But again, we break away from a um, opposition set piece. Here's Pastore to De Jong, who's back end, as you can see. Of course, on a yellow card, as you'd expect. Calabria. 
whips it in and it's a bit of a, I mean, it's an absolute mess, <laughs> really. And that, I, I couldn't possibly tell you if Mania put that in or someone put that in. But I look again, another breakaway. So this is perhaps the game making up here. And I say it's a rarity because look, the striker, he passed, he passed to, to, a, to a teammate. How rare is that? You know, usually you have, you'll have a striker here, you know, breaking away and he'll get to about here and shoot from a preposterous angle. But he didn't. He passed to Menez, and he's got, I think, his 16th goal of the season. Then this. Right, I'll tell you what, we'll come back to that. 2-1 <laughs> against Empoli. Fabinho and Christian Benteke, his first goal for 13 hours. Once again, Calabria man of the match, as you can see. A hey, look at corner. A little bit messy, but it went through. Fabinho gets his second goal, I think, for Milan. I'm not quite sure what he's even in the box for. He's usually a bit more defensive than that, but... Um, we're, uh, we're getting a bit more adventurous, I think, um, now that the confidence is growing again. And as you can see, here's Calabria. Any second now, he whips it in. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's not. <laughs> and so it's, I, oh, that fooled me the first time as well when I watched it back. I thought that was going to be the Menteke goal, but we try again here. Calabria beats his man this time, and a uh, nice little uh, tapping finish for Benteke. 13 hours, as I say. Now, this is the first leg. We're about to get into part two of this. What an absolutely mad game this was. Three different goal scorers for us, uh, three for them as well, Benzema, as you can see, getting two. But we actually took the lead in the Bernabeu. Uh, here we go, Calabria, lovely little touch. And to his credit, a fantastic finish. That's 1-0, and we went at half-time 1-0 with the away goal. I was so, so happy with this. And then, all of a sudden, it was like you could start to see the quality of Real Madrid shine through. Now, I know we beat them in the group stages and I think now this will be the fourth time we've played them this season and you know we've only lost one of them so we've lost one of three one draw one Madrid win one Milan win it really does come down to this game that we're going to watch live in a few moments um, but there's I mean a little bit unlucky and Zomo doing or whatever he's called and Zomo to be, to be fair to him wasn't bad I mean I'm sure the game will give him a shitty you know rating or something or an average rating but for the most part, I thought he did really well. Um, there's the, there was a goal, I'm not sure if you just saw it there, against Empoli, um, where he actually made two fantastic double saves. Unfortunately, the ball still broke to an Empoli player on the third go, and um, it was a basically an easy tap-in for him. But it was one of those unfortunate things, and there's Cristiano Ronaldo. There's 2-1, I think that was. Um, so Real Madrid, they turned it round, and then we got a penalty, and of course, Jeremy Menez scores. When does he ever miss a penalty? He is so fantastic at that, and I made a sub there. And then a few moments later, the next highlight was this. Uh, we actually took the lead, so that was 2-2, and then this became 3-2. I was absolutely knackered after watching this. I think I just had to take a break for five minutes. It was just one of those crazy games. And Calabria, again, he's so good dribbling there. And Bonaventura popping up on the left-hand side. But it's all about Davide Calabria. Again, look out for his name in real life, hopefully over the next few years he will really begin to make his name because at the moment I am so, so impressed with what I'm seeing. Here he is again on the ball. You know, everyone's just everyone's going down that right-hand side. It's all going through him. But this is in uh, the 83rd minute here. Ronaldo again, he's still great. I think he's about 30, I'm not sure. Maybe enter zone, maybe could have done a little bit better there. Maybe he could have held on to it. Um, but, I mean, he's a 19-year-old goalkeeper. I don't expect much of him. And then this is in the 93rd minute. Pressing for, I mean, maybe we should have, or maybe should have been a bit more defensive, but De Jong, he can't go in there, he's on a yellow card, and Cuadrado, yes, that is Juan Cuadrado, gives them a winner and make it 4-3 in the 93rd minute. What could possibly happen in the second leg? So we're very much in this. Gareth Bale's injured, and so Serge or Aurora, or Rera, whatever his name is, I can never pronounce his name. Um, so we have the three away goals, that's the important thing. To, for this to go to extra time and penalties, it will also have to be 4-3 here. I don't see that happening personally. <laughs> um, this is what we're going to play then. Uh, that is not the team I was going to play. What am I doing? There we go. Play Mori here. So I'll show you me assembling this team. Uh, Benteke. Do I want to play Benteke? No. We're going to play Menez with Minier. And Menez will be playing as a Trek Bautista. I feel that player roles are often underrated. This, the amount of times I watch... Uh, we're going to play two Trek Autistas. By the time I watch Football Manager YouTube, I don't watch too many, but when I do watch them, I always look at them and go, why, you know, do people just leave them as um, 
def uh, what they call deep lying forwards support, you know, the default. And it just, it's a bit weird. I just, I don't know, I just find that to be very peculiar. Right, we're going to swap stones and bring on a Barte. There's some no Marilla. That is about the strongest back line as you can get. I know there are a few rare, uh, recent red lines there, but ignore that. And Zomo's in goal. Abate stones Bangala de Siglio. Now, do we play? Ooh, do we play an idol de Nigel de Jong? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I want to play Blind in that role, but oh, I'm not sure. No, it's gonna we're gonna we're gonna stick with Fabinho. Then we're gonna have Calabria, Mari, Pastore, Menez, and Menea. This is it then to get through to the Champions League semi-finals. Um, oh, that's one thing. Sorry, one final thing. Yeah, we'll have him as DLP. That's fine. Let's go then. So, Real Madrid. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. They've got Benzema, Ronaldo. That's just here is Ronaldo and Stentley. 34 years old. And look at all them dark greens. <laughs> Legendary winger. Um, perfectionist. There's another one of those personality uh, traits. I think in um, FM 15 or 14, he was a, um, a leader of some kind. Or, you know, what was it? What was it called? Natural leader. They've got Kovacic, Cro uh, Cruz, Varane's in there, Ramos, uh, James Rodriguez. So, <laughs> Ronaldo is also up there in the goal scorers. You see, he has eight level. In fact, not as good as this guy whose name I can't pronounce. He plays for Red, so uh, Red Bull Salzburg. <laughs> so I just can't believe that's such a random team to see. Uh, got no French time in the other game. We got Paris Saint Germain versus Marseille. Let's go on with it then. So we do have to score. That is just one thing I must say straight away. We do have to score because, um, in case you couldn't tell, four three, they're still winning. But I think that should really be the case anyway. And a pretty terrible ball there from Minia to start things off with. Should have made a bit more of that. Not too many shots at the moment. Here we go. Siglio out to Fabinho. I think I'm saying his name right as well. Now Menez was in a half decent space then, but Abate still going himself, but not a great finish. And again, I mentioned this against Zenit. You know, we would expect us here to really go for it, but this is Real Madrid. This is a slightly different kettle of fish. You know, they are the favourites. They are the best, arguably the best team on the game. I don't think it really applies here. It's a little bit different, especially when you have Cristiano Ronaldo, who I don't think deteriorates as a player. I've, I've, honestly, he was there was a chance for Maori, and it's a good save by Navas, a bit of an awkward angle. I remember. Um, on FM15, because I played up until about, I think, the 2040s, I think, and he did not at all deteriorate as a player. You know the way, by the time you get to, you know, a player is, I don't know, 38, 39, 40, you know, they're nowhere near as good as they usually are. You know, they're completely dropped off and, they're a bit, and their attributes are just constant red arrows downwards, you know, the whole thing. Ronaldo wasn't. He was pretty, pretty much stayed the same. Um, obviously, a handful of attributes have changed, but for the most part, he was still a player, even at 40 years old, um, who would fit into pretty much any team in the world. And he was, he retired off his own back, and he didn't need to. He could have easily have kept going for a few more years. In fact, it probably... Oh, our chance for Mineer. Offside, unfortunately. Um, I wouldn't even say a few years. He probably could have gone for another five or six years. By the way, he was looking. There was no sign... Um, of him changing at all. And the same could be said for Messi. I think Ronaldo, it was a bit less obvious with Ronaldo. Um, but here's a chance for Menez. I, I mean, I didn't really keep an eye on Messi as much because Ronaldo was still winning awards. Messi wasn't, but Ronaldo was still winning like the Ballon d'Or at 39 years old and and all of these things. Whether that will actually be the case in real life, I don't know. Um, now, when it comes to the whole Ronaldo-Messi thing, I mean, I think that's a complete joke personally I hate anything to do with that for me there's people who get involved in that who don't even like football they they only they only support Real Madrid or Barcelona purely because of Ronaldo or Messi they're more interested in the individuals rather than the team and that to me is completely joke <laughs> that's a joke um, I mean I can understand if you know you're a Portuguese or Argentinian fair enough but for the amount of people who engage in this argument and don't even like football is quite frankly ridiculous um Okay, so I'm going to just slightly higher. And I'm going to take early crosses off. Um, I'm going to move Menez to a complete forward. 
And it, it, yeah, and getting back to sort of arguments, I do think it is a thing. Personally, if I who's better? If you ask me, Ronaldo or Messi? It's Messi by a hairline. <laughs> it, overall, it's Messi. But that, I don't know if that's just because he, you can see him. I, you know, I can't even give a reason. It's just I have a natural. If someone's, I am naturally drawn to Messi for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's maybe it's, maybe it's because. Ronaldo was incredibly unlikable Manchester United player at um, uh, you know in the Premier League when he played, and I, I don't like that. You know, I'm naturally inclined to dislike that and therefore dislike him. Um, Mania should score there. He's got another chance, and it's oh, chance breaks. Calabria is there again. <laughs> He's just getting in the right areas every time, and now we lead on away goals. We'll just pull that back slightly to standard. Uh, they've only had one shot all game. Yes, they've outpossessed us a little bit, but really. In virtually every part of the game, we have dominated the year. It was a really good stroke of luck, and it fell to Davide Calabria, the man in form. You saw his last five games. His average rating was 8.14. Now, that is just seriously unreal. That is serious form. But here come Madrid, and it's a good interception by the Siglo. Now, Munir has switched it to Menes, who's in a good position here, and the finishing again is letting us down from these two. They've put it wide, not just by a bit, by a considerable margin. They keep putting the shots wide, and how many can boast a 7 rating, I don't know. 7.1, but well, here's a chance for Pastore and a free kick, and his free kicks are also not great, I've got to be honest. We are now going to bring on... Oh, I don't I want to take Mario off, but no, I'm not. I think that'll be a bit of a... That'll be a bit of a strange decision. We are going to bring on Christian Benteke. This may not work... I'm going to try. He scored in the last game, I think. Was it against Empoli? I think he scored. So, hopefully, he might find his feet here and maybe win us the game. Here's Fabinho now. We have dominated this game, haven't we? Here's chance for... Oh, winners. Is that deflection? No. But you know what I mean? Look, look at this home advantage. Look at that. We have kept them. I haven't changed a lot. And, you know, th this same team, same formation, same tactics has been absolutely dominated by Sampdoria. Yet, this is now being completely... Destroying Real's not destroying, but it's, it's you know it's having a good game against Real Madrid and Jose Mari that was an opportunity to win it and it still hasn't happened. Right, we're going to go defensive. I know probably saying why are you changing it? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? you no, I don't trust that. I don't trust the game <laughs> to um, to all of a sudden. It'll, look, Real Madrid are going to go far more attacking. We need to respond to that. They are clearly going to go into some sort of overload um, thing, so we need to respond to that. Um, I am going to take Menez off, who's had actually quite a good game, to be fair. So I don't know how a good game, I, I don't even know. Um, we'll bring on Murillo and put five at the back. Just bear in mind, there's no way this is going to extra time or anything. We don't have to worry about that. Um, and yeah, um, who else do we bring on? <laughs> that, um, no, that just leaves that entire... No, I'm not going to do that. That's silly. We'll... Go back to slightly deeper. Do we use the offside trap? No, I'm not going to do that. Let's not get silly here. So we've got about five minutes or so. And to be honest, Real Madrid have offered very, very little. And here we go then. Well, we're into the final 30 seconds. Real Madrid simply did not turn up. I mean, I know they scored the late winner. And there's Calabria again winning the ball. Fantastic. I know they scored the late winner in the Bernabeu. But here... And they, they have the quality to win it, but Mangala standing up brilliantly. Here's Danilo, last chance for Real Madrid. It's Quadrado, not again. Stones gets it away. Ten seconds to go. Contrao and Ronaldo's offside. That might do it. So it's going to be another victory against Real Madrid. We beat them in the group stages. We drew with them. Should have beat them in the group stages twice. And we've done it in the quarterfinals. Well, they simply did not turn up. They were out of it. Totally. 1-0, and it is the man of the moment, Davide Calabria. Once again, Kovacic was man of the match, who cares? Ronaldo and co are out. And so are the champions. Paris Saint-Germain have knocked out Marseille. Overturned that defeat, so win on the way goals. And now the Champions League quarterfinals. Now we do have Leverkusen and Schalke, Bayern and Chas. Three German clubs, Jesus. Uh, in the uh, in the next potentially in the quarterfinals here, I think Bayern are safely through. But then again, I've seen score lines like that overturned before. Um, I would assume also Chelsea are through. We'll just find out. I don't know if they're going to be playing tomorrow. Yes, they are. Let's see. We've also got a round of Serie A games. We'll just show you then who we could be playing. In fact, let's do the draw. It's on Friday, so we'll do that. 
We'll see how we go. And, then we've, and also, what's good here, we've got to play Parma and, and Verona, who are 18th and 17th. So really, we should be wrapping up the title soon. Um, I will be doing the next few games live. So you can see, as you can see, yeah, Schalke, very close to overturning that. Um, and Chelsea go through on away goals. Gabbiadini scored for Leverkusen, but it was not enough. And there we go. And so let's just see Serie A, where we are for now. So obviously we have that game in hand, but if we win, um, we will pretty much have won the league, in fact. Not officially, but there'll be four games to go. Four times three is 12. And I th in fact, it may... Unless Juventus... Ooh... Problem is, there's all sorts of calculations going on in my head now, and it's very really difficult to do when you're doing a live commentary, um, because obviously you've got the head-to-head -head record as opposed to goal difference. So I'm just trying to think. How did we get on against Juventus? We lost, didn't we? we lost one nil at home, and I think we lost two nil away. Wherever, yeah, I think we did that one live, didn't we? Um, so yeah, so it's not quite it's not over yet. But I think against Verona, if we win that, and if we beat Palmer, then that will do it. I think. But we will see who we get now. So I think that was either going to be Paris Saint-Germain, Chelsea, or Bayern Munich. And here are Juventus. They've got their game in hand now. Let's see how we get on. See, this is, <laughs> this is behind the scenes, so to speak. Barcelona versus Liverpool in the Europa League, clearly. Right, here we go then. So, the draw. Milan, Bayern, Chelsea, PSG. Who's it going to be? Oh, it's going to be against Paris Saint-Germain. Oh, oh, dear. Well, we'll see. Who is managing them? Is it still with Diego Simeone? Okay. Now, they've fallen away a bit. They've actually finished third in Ligue 1, which is a bit strange. Uh, how are they getting on now? Well, they're clearly top, and they're probably going to win it. That is actually quite an interesting little race there. I know Leon are miles away from PSG, but that's not the end of the world. That uh, Paris Saint, I mean, they're going to win there. They're going to probably win their uh, title for the first time in a few years, but... Yeah, look at that. They don't know what's quite, don't know what quite uh, happened there with them, but they're in the Champions League semis. That's all that matters. Uh, Chelsea versus Bayern, and repeat of the 2012 final, is going to take place there. We'll also, whilst we're at it, check the league. So we're just going to Chelsea here. Uh, Jose Mourinho is still there. That's quite funny. Uh, they are third in the league at the moment. City, Arsenal. It's going to probably be one of these two, isn't it? Uh, Newcastle here in Europe. They must have won the League Cup. Um... Liverpool manager who keep changing is now Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah, can I just point out Liverpool's manager? I just want to point this out. <laughs> You've had Klopp, who got sacked. Bear in mind, Klopp was at the start of the game, so, and it, it doesn't take into account the fact that he's just come in. Liverpool have always had a ridiculous um, expectation level, and it's like virtually impossible for for the squad, considering. Um, so he went, then Frank de Boer came in, they didn't even give, like they gave like half a year to. That was pointless. Inglethorpe was just um, a caretaker. Then David Moyes came in, I don't know, um, for a year, and a year and a half. And now Ancelotti's been here and he's probably going to get sacked. He's now at Manchester City, incidentally, David Moyes. Whoa. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Arsenal are now being managed by Jurgen Klopp, clearly, because Wenger's gone. Manchester United are being managed by Ryan Giggs. Okay. And Everton are being managed by Eddie Howe of Bournemouth in real life. Uh, and that's how the table looks. Uh, we'll also show you, we've had a look at that, we'll see Germany, two guesses of who's going to be top here, yep. Bayern there, as you'd expect, Mario Icardi, playing for Dortmund apparently. And lastly we'll show you Holland. Feyenoord are top, they're looking, ooh look at that, it's Ajax or Feyenoord isn't it? Really. Oh that's going to come right down to the wire. So thank you for watching then. I will be back with another live commentary. This time it will be against Palmer. Now I not sh I'm not sure if we can actually win the league. In fact we can't. So in fact I don't think we'll do Palmer live. What we'll do is we'll do Ah, we've got Verona to play, so we can actually win the title there. So um thanks for watching. We'll be back with a live come for there and then it will be the semis against PSG. That will be a good one. Please do come around for that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.